Hi everybody, welcome back to The Nay. This is Dawn Samuelson and I actually have a guest with me today. This is my daughter, Taylor Samuelson. And actually, I figured we'd talk for a few minutes about uh, maybe some of your experiences with The Nay, first of all, and then I wanted you to share a little bit about what's going on with you in college. So tell me a little bit about you. All right, well, I am, I just finished up my fall semester of junior year. Um, at, I'm at the University of Pittsburgh and I'm a psychology major. Hopefully, I uh, would like to go on to get my master's degree and be a, a facilitator and a, a therapist for the NAE program. That's the goal, at least. And um, school has been a little crazy right now with COVID. It's been quite an experience, that's for sure. Um, a lot of anxiety, a lot of just fear that's overwhelming and, and crazy stuff like that. So, Do you think maybe you could talk a little bit more about some of, the, some of what you experienced? Because I know that when I got a call from you, um, you had been one of the first people that had been basically taken out of your dorm and asked to move into a quarantine dorm. Do you want to share a little bit about that, uh, what happened during that, and maybe some of the um, um, emotions that you felt around that? Yeah, so I wasn't a direct, or yes, I was a direct contact. I did not contract COVID, but I was in contact based on CDC guidelines within six feet for more than 15 minutes without masks with someone who did. Um, so the school had implemented a system where you were pulled out of your dorm and placed into quarantine buildings. So um, I got a call from health services. I, I gave them a call earlier in the day and said, hi, I'm so-and-so. I've been in contact with so-and-so and, -so and um, what do I need to do? Do I need to go get a test? Whatever, kind of getting some guidance. And so they said, um, well, we'll give you a call back in about an hour or so and we'll let you know what we need to do, but you're going to need to move into quarantine housing tonight. I got a call back about 15 minutes later and said, um, we need you out of your dorm in the next hour. Wow. So that was scary. Uh, that was a lot. And, um, we had been, my roommates and I had been kind of preparing for a self quarantine anyway, um, because we had heard that this person had contracted it and, um, even though we weren't sure what the university was going to be doing, we wanted to self-isolate ourselves. We didn't want to spread it any more than it had. So um, I was at Walmart grabbing uh, food and, and stuff that I would need for about a week. And um, the lady said, yep, you need to come back to campus immediately. And as soon as you get back, you need to move move out of your dorm. So how did that make you feel? I know that, that uh, that's when you and I spoke on the phone, and that was a really challenging time for you. Can you kind of... Tell the audience a little bit about what you felt and, and the experience that you went through at that time. Yeah, so when I when I got that call immediate or immediately following that call, I I kinda there was like this inevitable knowing that I was gonna have to move into quarantine housing and, and such, but um, almost instantly I just I got this overwhelming anxiety because um, we had been, you know, seven or so months into the pandemic, but it had never hit so close to home. And realizing that I was at, you know, I was at risk. I couldn't go home to my family because of Ryan and being at high risk. I couldn't just be safe. And knowing that, you know, I wanted my, my family, my mom, to be there if I was sick to take care of me. And I couldn't. And I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to go into quarantine housing with one of my roommates. And if I wouldn't have, I don't think it would have turned out as well as it did for, uh, from an emotional perspective because I I had her and she had myself or kind of emotional back and forth right. I guess. Right. So, so there are a lot of people that actually probably go in without a roommate or some again we talked about the emotional support and how important that is. Yeah. So tell me then what happened once you actually um, got back and you were getting ready. You had only a short amount of time before you had to be moving. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, I got back to campus and pulled my car up right in front of the quarantine housing. And the, the building that they had selected, despite best intentions, is in the middle of campus. So I'm moving my stuff from my car into the buildings. And everybody knows that this is quarantine housing and my campus is... Is relatively small so i i'm in front of all these students it's you know five or five o'clock six o'clock something like that so people are still out and so moving and grooving and um a lot of people saw me go into quarantine and that's just knowing that there's that negative connotation to quarantine COVID, isolation anything along those lines 
it made me feel weird just knowing that there's all these eyes on me and being like, oh, she's she's going into quarantine and stuff like that. So that, and that's, that was, that's something you don't really think about. And actually, it's not like it's your fault. Oh, and I yeah. think that's the thing is our society tends to um, add to the problem by acting that way when it's something that you are asked to do. Now, again, you'd think that if there was and we'll get into what some of your ideas of how that could have been differently mm -hmm. handled. However, that was a big stressor for you yeah. because now all your peers are watching you walk in with your stuff and knowing that you're going into this quarantine building. And especially in the, the first, we were roughly the first or so-ish group to go into to quarantine housing um, following returning back to campus in the fall. And so a lot of, there was a lot of just unknowns. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I had people messaging me that night kind of saying like, hey, you're, I saw you're in quarantine, what's going on? And then it just spread like wildfire. And um, I wouldn't change it for anything knowing that I went into quarantine, I was safe, I was tested, and I didn't potentially spread it by any means. But that doesn't make it any easier. It, it, was, it was substantial and that, I mean, I think that majorly affected my semester because following my, I only had to do a week quarantine because um, it had been a week since I had been in contact with the person before I went into quarantine. If okay. you kind of understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So um, I was only, I only needed to be in there for a week. So I'm, we're doing the, the full 14 days. And um, that week following me getting out, which was, it was a Monday evening, it was midterms week. Oh. <laughs> and so I wasn't, I wasn't mentally prepared. I wasn't, I was physically exhausted, emotionally exhausted during that, that week. I was barely able to keep up with my assignments for that week alone, just kind of general assignments, you know? And then with uh, studying and preparing and doing the work for midterms was 10 times harder. I was just so emotionally, physically drained that I, that I had nothing more to give. So you talked to me a little bit about even when you had some of your friends try to meet you at the dorms and do social distancing because you needed that emotional support can you tell me a little bit about what happened during that situation when your friends came to visit? Yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously, in, in the haste of, of immediately moving out of campus, or, or excuse me, um, out of my dorm, we had messaged um, our roommates, because there are the six of us in the room, and said, hey, like, we forgot something. Can you bring it to us? And in this case, it was rubbing alcohol for our thermometers. And um, so we messaged our roommates and said, would you be willing to come drop it off? So they came, set it on our stoop, stepped back. Um, we could see through the, the front window that they were there. So after they stepped back, we opened the door, grabbed it, whatever. And then we were just trying to talk to them. And um, so after a little while, we had uh, been talking and they, the school provided us with like a little goodie basket that had um, puzzles and Jenga and, and stuff in it. And it included a whiteboard. So we were playing hangman on our front porch with our roommates without exchanging the board. My roommate um, that was in quarantine and I uh, were doing the hangman and they would text me words or something like that and then everybody else would have to guess it. And social distancing um, with masks, no exchanging of uh, anything whatsoever. And um, we had some people come up, people of authority come up and say that we needed to disperse. We were not allowed by any means out of our room. Um, the quarantine room in particular had a, a little front porch on it. And um, we were not allowed by any means to stick our head out the window, to step out of our front door other than to grab our, the food that they provided us for the day. And um, they, we, everybody was told to leave. And I didn't handle that well. So, yeah, talk about that a little bit. So I know that because we spoke on the phone through all of this, but tell me what, what you experienced at that point because I know that was really difficult for you. Yeah, so uh, that time in particular, it was just the first night, so I was a little upset, um, and I was like, okay, I, I understand, gotta follow rules, gotta do what you gotta do, can't really deny that, and um, so that was fine, but uh, a few nights later, I was talking to one of my friends, um, we were talking about our midterm paper for one of our classes, and he said, hey, like, I'm over at the library, I'll, I'll come over and we can talk through the window and work on the papers. So he sat on the sidewalk out front while I sat in my on my couch in my living room. So I was not outside of the room, anything like that, just continuing to social distance while wearing masks, etc. And um, 
we had another person, a different person, but another person of authority come up and uh, told him he needed to leave. And I instantly just started bawling. I said, I, I immediately stood up and, and asked to speak with the person. And I said, you don't understand how hard this is, truthfully. Like, I, I know you guys are doing your best, and this is still pretty new, especially being the beginning of the semester, and you got to do what you can. But this sucks, and I need the, the emotional support. I, I was breaking down, and I couldn't build myself back up. I was on FaceTime with my friends and stuff like that, but it's not the the physical interaction that we so crave just in normal day to day life, and it, that was that was really really hard. And um, she unfortunately kind of dismissed what I said, and um, but we had a, a very long conversation, and she tried to empathize with the situation, and I said, "Thank you for your concern and your try your attempt at empathy, but it's not the same." So please make an effort at, at doing better. This is horrible. And one of my concerns following quarantine, after I had been um, talking with a couple other people that had gone through it, they said there is no system in place for if somebody was to commit suicide in quarantine, they wouldn't know. And that absolutely scared me. Yeah. And, and that's a big change that I want to make at the school because um, they come and drop off your food for the day but if you're not up, they don't watch you come and get it and take it back. And you can leave your food out there for however, however yeah, long. If yeah. you don't eat your food, they just yeah. take it and give you a new yeah. bag. So, That's Taylor, horrible. I remember you and I talking through a lot of this. And I, do you remember some of the things that I talked to you about when you were going through this? Some of the recommendations that maybe I, I had mentioned to you when you were going through this? I remember the biggest thing that you had said was um, there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this. And I think, I mean, being here and doing this is exactly it. Mm -hmm. Being able to, to kind of share my experience and mm -hmm. um, pe people being able to relate to, kind of to my story to an extent and um, understand that the emotions are similar and, yeah. and stuff like that. Because um, that, to the best extent, helps. But in the moment, I couldn't help but have negative thoughts yeah. and was like, oh, well, how could any good come from this? <laughs> like. It's so just, how, how what like would that. you do to change it? I mean, we, we spoke about that too, is that, you know, you are one of, one of the first ones at that school to be experiencing this and with your background, with the emotional coat and with the nay, um, you have, uh, you know, quite a few tools, but one of the things we talked about is what would you do to make the change? What, what would be, what could you do to make it better for those that are following you in, in having to go into quarantine? Because, even the school is new at this. Everybody's new at this. Right, right. So what were some of the ideas that you came up with that might be good for some change? Um, the first thing that really came to mind was, in, in particular on my campus, um, moving the quarantine buildings to a different building on the other side of campus because um, this particular building has a back door entrance that faces, like, the uh, – it's, it's secluded. Mm -hmm. it, it's a back entrance to the school. But nobody would really know that you're going in there. And um, and that would give you the confidentiality and privacy that is needed. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Instead of being right in the middle of, of campus. Sure. That would be preferable. Yes. Sure. Um, but then following that, I think just having the university there, um, not only just the university, I should say, but, um, you know, like your friends and family and the people that are closest to you and, and um, the people that are going to really validate your feelings and, mm -hmm. and um, try to do better for you, you know, having those people around. But... Um, my biggest concern was that those people that went through this alone, um, they don't really, they don't have that other person like I did. I had my roommate, already a close friend, and we got closer through that experience. But um, it's just it's it's so tough, and hopefully they'd be able to provide some emotional support through something like that. And um, immediately when I got the call saying that I was going to move into quarantine housing, I said, "Okay, can you uh, please get in contact with the school counselor? I would like to speak with her." And that in it, that in itself was quite an experience. It Do you was. want to share with that a it little was. bit? It was. And um, <laughs> so I was, I was in contact with the the school counselor. Um, I believe two or three days into my quarantine, um, and as therapists do, ask you how it's going, you know, kind of things like that. And um, I said, pretty crappy, to be honest. You know, that I, I'm just riddled with anxiety. I, I can't sleep, but I can't stay awake. I can't, like, there's no energy. I feel so tired, and, and 
I don't want to do my work and I can't, I have no drive to even do like the, the little activities in the basket and stuff like that. I just wanted to lay there all day. And she was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and that wasn't exactly the emotional support I needed. Yeah. And, yeah. and the way I accept the emotional support is going to be different from others, but that wasn't the best for my, for my case. So mm-hmm. unfortunately I wanted to say, okay, thanks for your help. Bye. And unfortunately, that happens a lot. And I think one thing that we'd like to uh, let people know is that, you know, just because they're a counselor may not be the best counselor for you. Yeah. And that there are a lot of different resources out there. Don't give up on one resource. Keep searching to find the one that can help you the best. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And and I realized I had kind of known that before, mm-hmm. but I didn't realize how... I've had I've had good therapists myself, so yeah. I, I yeah. can't can't help but think that they're all going to be awesome. But that, yeah, that's a that's a big learning experience. Yeah. I I didn't realize that she she has the knowledge, yeah. of course, yeah. but um, just the way that she is able to provide emotional support, is able to empathize and and provide feedback and stuff was just not what I needed to hear. And unfortunately, she was the only one available at the time. Mm. So the the counseling services through my university is so strained right now stressed that um i was lucky enough to get an appointment with her because Mm. she is working a full-time job outside of the office um at the university because we are on zoom so um i was just lucky enough to get an hour time slot with her and i think it's just because i was moving into quarantine and i immediately requested it so here you are going into this field and you have seen and and been on both sides of the fence how does that make you feel overall um, a little confused, to be completely honest, because I can understand how um, mentally, emotionally, physically tax- taxing it is to be a therapist, to provide for somebody else, and not even just with the the licensing and, and doing it as a profession, but, you know, just being the emotional support friend for people. I understand how much it just takes a toll out of me. Mm-hmm. And um, so... I can't blame her for for being busy, Mm -hmm. but I think there's also a lot of up-and-coming students, I mean, immediately coming out of school, myself included, Mm -hmm. but um, that can, that are are willing to to help and and do something. So um, they they were in a tough situation because um, one of their therapists had just um, retired, but um, COVID wasn't exactly the best time to be in between, in between professionals. So... um, I understand both sides because um, my experience going through that says, well, like, why, why don't you have somebody else? Mm -hmm. Like that, that just like, it doesn't seem like that's fair. Yeah. Um, But then on the other side of it, it's like, I, I can understand. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, COVID may have just been the breaking point. Um, And I, I empathize with them as well because they, they're, it's not any easier for them. So it's, difficult because I, I do see both sides yeah, so yeah. so as you can see that's been a, a interesting experience that taylor um has gone through and i think that she's not alone i think there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with the the covid reality and the loneliness and i think that's something that we could all do is our part to reach out to people and to be an empathetic ear and, and just listen um so thank you taylor and um um, i'd love to have you come back and and we'll do some more uh talking about some different issues that are coming up okay that sounds great all right well thank you very much